And here is the playing hall for Millionaire Chess. One million dollars guaranteed total prize money. First time ever in the history of chess. It's a nice playing hall. It's a seven round tournament. I was lucky enough to participate in it. You're going to see some of my games here, all seven of them. And at the end of the seventh, after the seventh game, I will do a little, I call critique of the tournament. Both good things and things I think that need some improvement. But anyway, it was a great playing hall. It was a great site in a fabulous and exciting Las Vegas. Had a great time. Hope you enjoy the games. Here's some pictures of me from Millionaire Chess. Played in Las Vegas, Nevada with my cowboy hat there. There was a lady there taking a picture. She was nice enough to post them online for me. Uh, it was a really great tournament. There's another picture. That's the young man on the left. His mother is the one who's taking the pictures here. And uh, there's another picture. And that's me at Millionaire Chess 2014. It's a great tournament. Hi, folks. John Cordisco here. It's my last game, round seven from Millionaire Chess, the tournament I played in Las Vegas, Nevada. I live on the East Coast of the United States, so I traveled across the country for it. First time ever, one million dollars in total prize money. And as anybody that's seen the previous videos, rounds one through six, I played pretty poorly. And I've got two and a half points now out of six games. I'm trying to win this game desperately. I need to get in the top 50 to get any money at all. Uh, 21st through 50th place pays $600. And I was trying to at least save some of my self-esteem. In this game, I'm white. My opponent is David Bird. He is black. And let's get to it. It's going to be a Slav. Pawn, A4. Computer likes knight f3 instead, and then after b5, e3. I played a4, e5. I took the pawn, and so that stops me from castling. The queens are off the board. My Fritz 13 computer off screen's got a tiny advantage for black, which means I really didn't play the opening that well. Bishop b6, he's protecting the pawn. I go e4. He goes knight a6. He's trying to get his knight in here to cause some grief for me. Either through this route or directly to this route. I go bishop b3. He castles long and checks. Now I can't castle anyway, but this I gave a lot of thought to. A lot of thought to. And if I go here, he can go here and force me to trade or move bishop here and then the knight comes here and checks with my king here. I really didn't want that nonsense. Computer calls for e1 and e2 for the king as the two best options. Third choice is king to c2. I want the neither of them or I should say any of them. I want the c1. I probably should have went to e1 because after e1 knight Rook, knight checks, bishop takes, c takes. And actually, it's a small advantage for me, believe it or not. But I went to c1 instead. He went king to b8. Now that gave me a tempo. I don't know why he did that. Bishop c5 is his best move here by far. Knight c5. And knight to h6 is also on the radar. But he decided to go king to b8 instead. So he got bishop c5. Bishop. Rook. Knight to h3 are the computer choices. After king to b8. It says go f4 on the computer. Now, or knight on g to e2 or h3. I decided to go knight f3. I probably should have gone here with the thought of coming here or maybe even here, depending. Now, in knight f3, you went bishop c5. Knight to d1 is the computer's choice, which is very interesting. 
And that's a move I hadn't considered. Like the G5 I looked at. I really didn't like that because after bishop takes, pawn takes, I got triple pawns in the center. I decided to take. Knight takes. King to C2. Now at this point, I have to win this game. Or a minimum draw this game in order to have any shot at all at any prize money. And so I'm pretty down the dumps here. But it's okay position. I mean, it's less than a pawn advantage for black. But I really can't figure out a way to get out of this. He goes f5. Now the obvious move here is what I did knight to g5. He takes the pawn. I take the bishop. Knight takes. And those few moves there are a little inaccurate on his part. I think that puts me back in the game. According to the computer, about three quarters of a pawn advantage. So that was almost a pawn and a half swing there in the last four moves. Knight takes e4. I've got a pretty good center now. This pawn is going to come up. Uh, I think I'm in pretty good shape. This is a good spot for the knight right here. I feel I feel a lot better at this point. Rook to d5. I took the pawn. He took the pawn. Bishop takes. Now he has a choice. Rather to take the knight or the bishop. He decides to take the knight. Interesting. So I go rook. And he goes knight to f6. Takes, takes. Now, after the queens are off and the minor pieces got really exchanged, I'm thinking to myself, okay, you're in a minor piece on game. My bishop against his knight. If we trade rooks, I should be okay. Uh, with pawns on both sides of the board, I should be all right. What to do, what to do. I went F3. Right now the computer's got us at dead even. 0, 0.00. He pulls back the knight to F6. Now this is where you start to wander a little bit. I should go B4, Bishop C4, Bishop C4. I'm thinking to myself, okay, let's see what he does. And I'm debating here whether... Do I keep my king on the side of the board where the two pawns are? Or do I bring the king over to the king side where I have three pawns? And I'm debating this as I'm playing here. King to c7. I grab the open file right away. Now I'm threatening, of course. Rook here. Pick up a pawn. He plays rook e8. I don't have to take it, but I pretty much do. He's going to end up, if I go here, he's going to check me here. I'm going to have to move Rook up, and he's going to take it. It's going to come out the same. So I took it, Knight takes, gets this Knight in the back row. And I'm looking at all the candidate moves in the computer, and all of them say 0, 0.00. Right now, this game is dead drawn. And I don't know why I did this. I pushed the pawn up. It's not a huge error, but it's a small inaccuracy. I'm trying to get the pawns traded on that side of the board. To give myself a pass pawn to occupy either his knight or his king. King to d6. Here comes the king. In these series of moves coming up here, I play extremely poorly. I just don't know this endgame as well as most. Oh, I pushed the other side. Frankly, I should have went king c3, king g3, g6. Tiny advantage for black, but I'm really okay. After b4, he goes king e5. Now it's clear. His king is going after the side where my pawns are. 
It's going to need the help of the bishop. Bishop d3 is the obvious move. Hitting his pawn, picking up a tempo. And for some crazy reason, I went g3 instead. Now, I'm figuring it's blocking out his king, right? Why not? Because king d4, I let his king in that side. I figured, okay, now I'm really up against the wall here. I'm losing this game. How am I going to go after him? I thought about going bishop g8. I don't want d3 to go after the pawn. I better go on bishop b6 instead. After king e3, bishop d7. Knight d6. It's not great, but it's better than what I had. After bishop to d3, he goes h6. Now I'm starting to feel like this game is slipping away from me. And I have two and a half points. I have to have at least a draw. And I have no... I thought that bishop would overpower the knight, but it just didn't work out that way. So I guess I'm going to have to figure out my bishop against knight endings a little better. I've pretty much botched this. What do I do now, is my thinking. Right now I'm keeping his king out. Here, here, and here. He can go here. He decides to go B, I go B5. And it just starts getting worse. King to D2 is the computer's choice after knight to D6. After B5, he plays C5. Now he's got a pass pawn on me. Now, how do I, my A and B pawns, how do I move them to make sure that his pawns end up on light squares? That's my question. So I figured I'd go A5. And it's a question mark. Now it is almost a three-point advantage for black. Now what I wanted to do was go pawn here. If he takes, I take. This pawn ends up on a light square. Okay? I can go after it. So I go B so he goes B6 to stop that. Now his pawns are all gonna be on dark squares, and I'm pretty much screwed right now. Do I take do I go A6? I want A6. Terrible, terrible move. I'm losing right now. A takes B6. A takes F4 is the computer's suggestion. And I might have a chance to live. After A6, knight to D6. Now this is a very instructive ending for any of you that study endings. Computer calls for F4. Or G4. I want G4. I'm trying to get some action on the king side. You get a pass pawn to try to either occupy his knight or his king. He goes c4. I go bishop g6. I don't have much choices here. He goes king to e3. What am I going to do here? What am I going to do? I decide to trade, try to trade some pawns off. He has to take. I take. King takes, king c3. Now I'm going to eventually get that pawn, but I have to give up the bishop for it. Do I want to do that? He takes, I take, knight c7. Now I can't guard the pawn by going here. Bishop can't make it, so that pawn's going to fall. So I go bishop b1. King f4, he's going after the other pawn. I push the pawn up to guard it. Now, the computer has me right now is down by four pawns, which is over a piece. This game is basically lost. So my hope is at this point is this. I'm hoping my king here can win both of these pawns. And then this bishop can sacrifice himself for this pawn, and I can draw the game. That's my only hope at this point. And it's pretty far-fetched, but i got to grasp at straws when you can. He goes king e5. And I'm pretty much going to have to go back and forth. He's going to eventually take the pawn, which he does. 
I back the bishop off. Knight c5. Now I'm thinking his thoughts are this knight can get this win this pawn. And that's I have to get these two pawns in A and B for black before he can do that. King. King d6. Bishop c2. This is tough, tough, tough. And I'm feeling the pressure. I can't force the knight to move because he's on a dark square. He guards this square very well. And the king's going to come over so he can push. And that's what he does. Bishop d1. e6 checked. The pawns are starting to roll now. Now they're starting to move. I have to back the king up. He brings the king up. King c4. Now this is the last round. I'm not sure what the gentleman's score was, but he was somewhat in the same situation I was in. I think he had a half point more than me. I had two and a half. I think he might have had three. He was looking to try to get in the top 50 as well to try to score. So right now I'm holding my breath. See what's going to happen. He goes knight to d7. I go king. I've got to keep my king on that side of the board. King to e5. Going towards the pawn. Bishop e2 to go after his pawn. King to f6. Now that was the move that brought his score down dramatically. Dramatically. Knight c5 was the choice of the computer. It protects the pawn and stops him from getting in the king in that area. But he goes king to f6. And the score went from four and a half points advantage for black to a half a point instantly. After knight to c5, according to the computer here, it says the result of the game is clear. Black will win after king to c4, knight e4. But that casual move there, just that king to f6, which is a really natural move to make. Bishop takes. Now I've got part of my plan. King takes g6. The game right now on the computer is drawn. He blew it. King b5, I go after the pawn. And I'm going to make the knight move next. I can take this pawn. King to h5. I hit the knight with my or bishop with a hit the knight with my bishop. He has to move it. I take. And now the game is drawn. Completely drawn. But even still, he might be able to finagle away to use his knight to block. So this pawn can come down. So the bishop can't get the pawn. So I've got to be vigilant. I've got to bring the king over. H4, king, knight checks. Gives me another tempo, and here we go. The game is dead drawn. There's no way he can win this. He goes king to g3. He can't advance the pawn. Once bishop takes, the game is drawn. I try to get on g1 or f1. King to f4, I bring my king over, and now I'm fine. I'm absolutely fine. That bishop, it's the power of the bishop over the knight that saved me, even though he did mess up. That bishop saves me. Knight, bishop, knight, he tries to block. I just move the king over. Now he advances the pawn, because the knight can block. Now it says, and I tried to figure this out. If bishop takes knight, king takes, king to g3, if it draws or not. Computer said it does, but I wasn't going to chance it. And I was so tired of this point where on move 58, I just went g1. It comes out the same. g3, bishop, I've got to stop that pawn from advancing to here. Knight to h4. Now, I do have to say we went about eight more moves after this, but this is all I'm going to show to move 60. And the game was drawn. He was really upset, and rightfully so. 
you just let your guard down for one moment. He thinks he thought he had a winning position, and he did. And that was his doom. He figures no matter what he did was winning. He was a little upset, but he was a good guy. And we uh, we drew. And that gave me three points out of seven after a terrible, terrible start. I ended up out of 70 people in my section. I ended up at 39th place, basically the middle. My goal was top 20. And considering I only had one half of a point in the first four rounds, I think that was somewhat of a decent comeback. So I got $600 U.S. and end up in 39th place out of 70 players. That's probably the best I could have accomplished considering my position in the last round and how I played the beginning. Anyway, folks, that's the blood, sweat, and tears of my first time ever at Millionaire Chess. It's the first time ever they've had it. $1 million guaranteed prize money. Now, I'm going to do a, a video after this game. This is the last game, round seven. And I'm going to do a little critique. I mean, nothing, uh, I'm not going to really put the guys that organized it down. I'm going to talk about all the great things that were done and I think some areas where they might need some improvement. Anyway, folks, that's the drama and saga of my millionaire chess experience, at least chess-wise, even though Vegas was a great place, got to see and do a lot of things. And I want you all to remember, folks, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye. And here are some pictures from my trip to Las Vegas for millionaire chess. There's the Bellagio Caesars Palace, the Mirage, million dollars guaranteed prize money. First time ever in the history of chess. Just want to show you some pictures uh, from off of Las Vegas Boulevard. Beautiful hotels, beautiful buildings. Uh, cabs everywhere. It's like New York. You can get around anywhere you want to. There's a Caesars Palace on the right. Just wonderful. Another picture of Caesars Palace. See a little reflection there. It's up on a bridge with glass behind it. Reflected a little bit off the glass. Bailey's down Las Vegas Boulevard again. Place is running 24-7. The economy is booming. I'll tell you, this is the epitome of capitalism, folks. So I thought it was a great place. I wish I could spend more time there. Um, probably a little too hot in the summer, but... And there's Donnie Marie, voted number one performers in Vegas. Very a personal friend of mine, very close. And she loves those guys, so I got that picture for her. There's the Blasio again, and then we go down to, there's the gondolas, those boat rides, and the beautiful buildings, beautifully landscaped. I mean, it's, I'll tell you, I know the economy's tough in the United States, but if you can't find a job here, you can't find a job anywhere. Encore again, uh, building off a view off a bridge, a lot of traffic, but it's very uh, pedestrian friendly. They stop all the cars for the big intersections for the people to get through and there's a the waterfall there of outside of a hotel and there's me uh, smiling away <clears throat> excuse me in a nice bright sunny day in Las Vegas I call that the needle I guess you can go up on top of that another picture of the Wynn Hotel Steve Wynn the big entrepreneur in Vegas Trump Hotel and Neiman Marcus right next to it there the Mirage with the uh, Beatles show and you see Caesar's Palace in the background. And poor Mario there. I cut his head off. There he is. There's Mario. There's people dressed up all over the place. Pirates, showgirls, you name it. The only thing I didn't see was Darth Vader. And there's the Eiffel Tower restaurant. Pretty cool place. And Britney Spears' Peace to Me show. Now, I'm not a big Britney Spears fan, but I went to the show, and it was really, really good. I'm glad I went. It isn't just a concert, it's an actual show. And, and she did very well, and so did everybody else that was in it. And there's a picture of the airport, me leaving Las Vegas. So there it is, a little picture tour of Las Vegas from when I was at Millionaire Chess in October 2014.